Hello, folks. Um, this is our third part of how to write electron configurations. We're going to talk about ions now, right? So in the previous two videos, we were only talking about atoms that were neutral. They had exactly the number of electrons that you would think, namely that it equals the number of protons. But with the ions, we're going to see that we're, these um, particles are either going to gain electrons or lose electrons. And so we need to change that electron configuration accordingly. Right? We need to either add electrons to that elect electron configuration or remove electrons from that electron configuration. So again, as a quick review, right, sodium, um, if I draw an atomic orbital diagram for sodium, um, that was, right, just Na, and sodium has 11 electrons. And if I go and I put those in, I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Or in other words, I would say that this um, electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. And so what we're going to start talking about here is what happens if this becomes an ion, right? What happens if this thing is no longer um, just sodium? Let's say it gains an electron or loses an electron, right? So if you look at the sodium ion, which is sodium plus, and we'll talk, I'll remind you that Na uh, sodium is always a plus one ion. What we're saying is that it's since it's a cation, right? This is a plus one, and I'll even write plus one here. What that means is it lost one electron and the electron is that it's going to lose so that it becomes Na plus is going to be this 3s1 it loses the highest energy electron right so it's going to lose that highest energy electron which in our case is a 3s so what happens is now if you're talking about a sodium ion instead of the sodium atom, we have the 1s still, we have the 2s still, we have our 3ps still, and we have our 3s still. It's just what we're going to see is that now sodium, right, which we said sodium Na had um, 11 electrons, which means Na plus, right, if it lost an electron, it only has 10 electrons, right, because it's a positive charge, that means it has one more proton than electrons, or in other words, it lost an electron. Now, if I put in my 10 electrons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That is what our sodium would look like. Or in other words, it becomes 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Right? That's its 10 electrons. 2 plus 2 plus 6 is 10 electrons. So that's what this whole video is going to be about, is how we change from a neutral atom, which was up here, right? This is just sodium, sodium 0. And now a cation in this case, which we have the sodium ion, which is sodium plus one, right? That means it lost an electron. It used to have a 3s um, electron, and now it does not have a 3s electron. It is gone. It got taken away by, by something at some point some, in its history. Now, and I'll, we're also going to make the point, and I'll mention this again, is the reason why we get certain ion numbers, right? Plus one, minus two, plus three, et cetera, for ions is because we're trying to just have full subshells. Right? We don't really like, nature doesn't really like this half full 3s. It either wants to add an electron to this to make it full or remove an electron so that you only have full subshells. Right here, I have a full 1s subshell, a full 2s subshell, and a full 3p subshell. Oh, sorry, that should be a 2p. Did I write 3p? Nope, here we go. 2p. Um, that was it. That's a 2p, not a 3 is because it wants to have just full subshells. And so that's what we're going to see in these future um, examples here. So I remember, like I was just saying before, atoms, if you hear the word atom, like a sodium atom, that's implying that you have a neutral particle, that the number of protons equals the number of electrons, right? So if you have chlorine, its atomic number is 17, which means it has 17 protons. And since it's neutral, that means the number of protons equals the number of electrons. So that means I also have 17 electrons, which is kind of how we've been operating so far, right? So again, that means if I'm looking at chlorine, and I'm going to start with the 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, and I'm going to go and I'm going to put in those 17 electrons, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Oh, look at how close chlorine is to getting just one, to, to filling that 3p, right? We've got five out of six in that 3p. So currently its electron configuration 
is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5, and it wants to be a p6. And so when we look at the chlorine ion, whoops, and this should say ion out here. That's why I'm talking about this, ion. If you look at the chlorine ion, which is Cl minus um, one, remember that ions are just, they're charged particles, which means, right, that their number of protons does not equal number of electrons, that there's going to be some sort of deviation here, right? Recall that if you are um, positively charged, that means you're a cation, and that means you lost some electrons, whether it's one or two or five or however many. If you are negative, that means you're an anion, and that means you gained um, an electron or two electrons or three electrons or something like that, right? So cations are always positive. You lose electrons. Anions are always um, when you gain electrons. And if you have trouble remembering those terms, uh, one way to remember is that the cation has a T in it, which looks kind of like a positive sign, right? It's like here's a positive sign in the word cation, so those are the positive things. And then anion, the prefix an is always a negative thing, right? Like like anarchy or something like that, right? To like not have a government structure. Anyways, um, so stable ions, and this is really an important point here that I wanted to make, right? Stable, stable ions tend to have full subshells, like I showed you with that previous example, right? We want to have full S's, full P's, full D's, or full F's. Those tend to be more stable. This is sometimes called the noble gas rule or the octet rule. Um, but we're just going to look for full shells. This is the underpinnings. This is the explanation. For the noble gas rule, um, or sometimes uh, people refer to it as octet rule. I don't really like the octet rule because there's so many things that don't have octets. But noble gas rule is saying that most of the ions are going to tend to look like noble gases. And that's true for all the representative elements. Transition metals are a little different, but it's true for a lot of elements that they want to look like noble, gas, noble gases. So they're going to have a noble gas configuration, which we'll see in a sec. So if I have a chlorine ion, right, um, it's, it's, an, it's negative. It's a, the chlorine is always a negative one. Um, it's atomic number 17, <clears throat> so its number of protons is 17. But its number of electrons, it's actually going to have one more electron, right? Remember, anions gain electrons. How many did it gain? It gained one because it has a minus one charge. That's why it became minus one, is it gained one negative electron. So that means that when I fill this um, atomic orbital diagram, all right, so I've got my 1s's, 2s's, 2p's, 3s's, and hopefully this is starting to get really boring looking to you, which is a good sign because that means you're like, yeah, 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 I know how to do this, Doug. Stop wasting my time. Um, but I'm not, I got to put in 18 electrons. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Dun, 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 dun. We're super excited, right? Because now we have a full P, a full 3P subshell. <clears throat> and again, this is going to help it look like the nearest noble gas, in this case, argon. It's isoelectronic with argon. It has the same number of electrons as argon. And that means that the um, electron configuration is now 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, right? Which is another way to say that all of the subshells are full, right? Because s's are supposed to have two, nailed it, nailed it. P's are supposed to have six, nailed it. S has two, nailed it. P has six, nailed it. Everything's totally full, which is why the chloride ion is so stable <clears throat> and why chlorine atoms like Cl2 are so reactive. They're unstable because they're not happy about this situation. This situation needs to get fixed. It's going to be lower in energy if it can fill that p orbital, which is what chloride almost always does. <clears throat> so, to, uh, so some of the common charges on the periodic table. Um, don't look too closely at this periodic table. I just, I just now realized that um, this one's in another language. So this is not in English. I don't know if it's German or something. I don't know. It's got a lot of accents. Maybe it's some sort of Scandinavian something. I don't even know where this periodic table came from. doesn't matter. The symbols are the same, which is what I really care about. If you look at your group numbers, right? So you have um, group 1, 2. We're going to do the, uh, two, the, the A method. So this is group 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. <clears throat> 
you're going to see common charges. Everything in this group one, they tend to form plus one charges, right? So if you have a, a hydrogen ion, it's H plus one. If you have a potassium ion, it's H, or sorry, it's, it's K plus one. If you have a cesium ion, it's Cs plus one. Everything in this group, everything in this group here, it tends to be plus ones. Everything in group two tends to be plus twos. Everything in group three tends to be plus threes. We're not really going to see group four in ionic compounds, so it's kind of a moot point. But they could swing either way, either go plus four or minus four. Uh, nitrogen, nitrogen's group are all minus threes. Oxygen groups are all minus twos. The halogens, right, the fluorine, chlorine, bromine, those are all minus ones. And then the noble gases we're just omitting. I'm just going to put a zero there because noble gases tend not to be in compounds. Um, and they tend not to form ions, so I don't really need to worry about them gaining or losing electrons. Now, that's not true for things like xenon and radon, but generally speaking, you don't find noble gases in compounds. And then the other issue here is that transition metals, the problem with transition metals is that their charges can vary. They can vary, right? Because you can have things like you can have iron plus two, but you can also have iron plus three, which is why we had to say like iron three oxide or iron two oxide when we were naming things. Um, but the idea here is that these charges are informed by trying to fill or empty orbitals so you only have full subshells. And so all of these ions that we're going to see, most all of these ions, especially for these main groups, right? Groups one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight they're all going to have full shells by the time they're done being ions. They're all going to look like a noble gas, which is why um, it's called the noble gas rule. Now, they don't become noble gases. It's just that they have the same number of electrons, and they have the same electron configurations as a noble gas. So we saw that with sodium, where sodium lost an electron to look like neon. And we saw that with chlorine, where chlorine gained one electron to look like argon, right? That when chlorine gained one electron, it becomes a minus one. When sodium lost an electron to look like neon, if it loses one electron, that's why it became plus one. And the same story is true for all these other groups. Transition metals we'll see are a little more complicated in a second. So how am I going to draw some of these, right? So I want to draw these electron configurations for things. So let's start with argon. Argon is number 18. It says atom here, so that means I know that my number of protons and electrons is the same. It doesn't say ion, so it's just the same. So I'm just going to go find argon. Argon's right here. And then I do all of my normal electron configuration stuff, right? I'll put on my period numbers so I can kind of see what row I'm at. Um, argon, and I'll do the full thing for argon, but argon would be 1s2. One 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, right? Because again, I'm just going through the periodic table here, I'm just reading the periodic table. Uh, 3s2. 3p6, right, to get to argon. I went, went, went to my, my p's, here's my, my 3p's, so that's completely full. Next, I'm going to do uh, my sodium ion. So the sodium ion I did, but I want to kind of point out about the thought process here, right? If I just said sodium ion, I just saw this on a test or something like that, I see, ooh, it's an ion, and I go find the periodic table, I see that sodium's right here. <clears throat> um, I see that sodium's atomic number is 11. But I know that everything in this group is plus one, has a plus one charge. So this is really, right, this is going to be an Na plus one. I know my protons are 11 because that is the atomic number. So if it's a plus one, that means I lose one electron. So that means that I should only have 10 electrons. So then I'm going to look at the periodic table. I see that we have one S's. The 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and that has gotten me up to 10 already, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that's it. That's my 10 electrons. Right? I can only have 10 electrons. There they are. So I lost that one that was in the, um, the 3s orbital, and that's it. Now, if I do the same thing for oxygen, right? So I have an oxygen ion, also called oxide. Um, I know that oxygen, which is right here, oxygen's atomic number is 8. 
oxygen as an ion, everything in the oxygens group, remember I said on that previous one, is they're always minus two. And remember that they're, they're minus two because in order to look like the nearest noble gas, oxygen needs to gain one, two electrons, which is why it's a minus two. And we're going to see what's going on uh, with more. Actually, let me draw our oxygen just empty so you can see it. So 1s, 2s, 2p. Normal oxygen, just, just an atom. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Another way to look at this, this is for normal just oxygen. Just a plain oxygen atom, right? Just O. Um, notice that in its 2p, oh, it's so close to being full. How many more electrons does it need? It needs two more electrons, right? It wants two more electrons. It wants to go uh, five, six. It wants two more electrons. Which is why oxygen tends to form minus two electrons, right? Because if it gains those two electrons, that's two more negative charges, hence the minus two. And when it gains two more electrons, it has a full 2p subshell, which makes it more stable. And it makes it look like the noble gas, its nearest noble gas, which is neon. All of this stuff is related. So if I go back, right, number of protons, it's definitely eight. Number of electrons then is 10, right, because I'm going to add two electrons to what it started with, which was eight. So then when I write that electron configuration, I get 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, right? That's what this electron configuration would be. All of this put together with the purple, that is now 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 with those two electrons. Now I want to point something else out. I mentioned this term earlier, but I didn't define it. Notice that the, the sodium plus ion is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. And the oxygen ion, the oxide, is also 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So they have the same electron configuration. They're different atoms. They're not the same um, atom anymore. They're not the, I mean, they're not the same element. They're not the same atom. It's just that they have the same electronic structure. So they have the same electron configuration. Which means they're called isoelectronic. So if you, if you hear the term isoelectronic, that means that two different things uh, like, for example, Na plus and O minus 2, that two things have the same electron configuration. Then they're called isoelectronic. And these would also be isoelectronic, for example, with neon. If you did neon's um, electron configuration, and maybe you should, you'll see that it is also 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So it's isoelectronic with neon. And again, this is kind of the, uh, the underpinnings of what the noble gas rule is, right? where when you say that things want to look like the noble gas, what we mean is that they're going to be isoelectronic with the nearest noble gas. If you go down um, a period or in another period, then they're going to be isoelectronic with a different noble gas, maybe argon, maybe krypton, maybe xenon. And we're going to see that a lot show up for the things that aren't transition metals. Now, I want you to pause and take a crack at these two. Here we have a bromide ion and then calcium ion. So pause. See what you can do with these. Good. I, I really hope you practice. Let's let's take a look at how you did here. So bromide ion. So I know bromine is over here. Here's my bromine. It's in uh, group seven, which are always minus ones. Its atomic number is thirty-five, which means it has thirty-five protons. Since it's Br minus 1, that means you gain an electron, so that means I have 36 electrons. And then I need to draw the electron configuration for that, right? So that it's going to be a minus 1 because it's going to gain an electron to look like krypton. Um, I kind of, I want to feel lazy. I am feeling lazy. I'm going to start with argon. I'm going to give you the abbreviated one. I'm going to start with argon. If you look at argon, one way to do this is if you look at argon, argon has 18 electrons. So that means by putting that argon in square brackets, I've already drawn 18 electrons. So I just need to keep going to get up to 36. So I've already drawn 18. Um, if I look at my periodic table, I'm going to put the periods on here just to help me keep track of things. So I'm coming in here. Loop. So I'm in the 4s's. So the next thing after, after um, argon is the 4s. So 4s2. And then I hit my 3d10s. Now I'm at 12. 
So that's 30. I'm at 30, so I need six more for P6. Right, so what I did was I had 18, plus two is 20, plus 10 is 30, plus six is 36. That's all 36 of my electrons. I got all 36 there. So I just kept on adding electrons till I got up to 36. Remember that the square brackets means that you're saying that all of those electrons up to this point, and if you look on the periodic table, argon has 18. If this had been neon in square brackets, I would have already counted for 10 electrons. If this was krypton in square brackets, I would have already accounted for 36 electrons. And then you just keep counting from there. So you should have gotten a um, electron configuration for bromide, Br minus, that looks like this. Again, notice all full shells, right? All of the subshells are full, and it has it's isoelectronic with the nearest noble gas, which in this case is krypton. Now, when you hopefully when you went over calcium, which is here, right? Here's our friend calcium. Um, calcium uh, has an atomic number of twenty. I know that everything in group two, all of these alkaline metals are always plus two charges. That means it lost two electrons. So it originally had 20 electrons, but now it only has 18 electrons. Is that right? Yep, only has 18 electrons now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the whole thing for this because 18 electrons is not that bad. I just didn't wanna draw 36. So I have 1s2, um, 2s2, 2p6. That puts me at 10, I'm not quite there. Now we're at 3s2, now I'm at 12, and 3p6, now I'm at 18, right? Here's all 18 of my electrons. So that'd be the electron configuration for the calcium ion. And again, you'll notice that this is isoelectronic with um, argon. Just like up here, this was iso, whoops. This was isoelectronic with krypton. With krypton, with, with, with Kr, number 36. So again, when you do these ions, they better match up with a noble gas if they're not transition metals, right? If they're in groups one through eight, they should match up with a, a, a noble gas. Now, transition metals have a little uh, issue we need to worry about here. Well, two issues, really. The first one is that you just want to remember um, from beforehand, right, that if you have a D4 or a D10, those are going to promote that S electron. So just keep that in mind. That's going to happen first. So you first do that. And then the weird thing about transition metals is they are going to lose their S electrons before they lose their Ds. So what I mean by that is that if I looked at zinc, and zinc is right here. Here's zinc. And I'm just going to start with from, from argon, if that's okay with you. right? So I'm going to put argon in here. I'm going to draw the abbreviated one. And again, with my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I look at argon, I have my 4s2. And then I, so I go from argon, argon to 4s2. And then I have 3d10. Right, That would be for straight up zinc. This is for straight up just normal, normal zinc, zinc metal, zinc zero. And if you do plus two, right, the temptation for plus two is that, oh, you just, you're gonna lose two electrons, right? So the temptation is just say, okay, well, argon, 4s2, so that'd be 3d8 then, right? 3d8, to so take away two from the Ds. But what we're saying is that that is not what happens. This is not, the transition, right? We don't lose the Ds before the Ss, we're gonna lose the Ss beforehand. So what we see instead for zinc two, this is the correct way to do it, is what you do instead is you lose your Ss first. So I need to lose two electrons, that means both of my Ss, that means these, gone. So that means that you have argon and then just 3d10. So this would be the correct electron config configuration for zinc two plus. Right? I took my original electron configuration for zinc, and I lost my S electrons before I lost my D electrons. Now, if I would have had zinc 3, for example, then I would have lost this, and this would have become like D9. Um, but if this is just a zinc 2, I'm going to lose those two S electrons first. So this is the correct thing. We don't lose the Ds before the Ss. We lose the Ss before the Ds. But that's just for transition metals. It's not true for other things. It's just for transition metals. So let's look at some of these examples here. So here I have silver one. 
Remember that these Roman numerals tell you the charge, and they're always cations. Uh, metals are always cations uh, for our purposes. So this is zinc. Sorry, this is uh, um, silver plus one, and silver is over here. Uh, silver has an atomic number of 47. That means it has 47 protons. Since it's a plus one, that means it has 46 electrons. And so I'm going to draw first what I think silver should be. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Silver to me looks like it should be, um, and I'll start with krypton. It looks like it should be 5s2, 4d, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Right, so that's for straight up silver. And what we're saying here, oh, I got two things to worry about. Okay, good. This is why I do this one. It's a D9. So right off the bat, you should be like, oh, wait, whoops, 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 whoops. It's a D9, so I need to promote that electron, right? Um, I need to fill to become D10. Remember, because of the D9s, they fill up. So really, the silver one became krypton 5s1 because it promoted one of those electrons so that it could have a full D subshell, right? So now we have 40, 10. Still the same number of electrons. I haven't removed electrons yet. This is just for straight up silver, which means that if we're talking about silver plus, I need to lose an electron. And we just said, right, that always we're going to, that the, the metals, the transition metals are going to lose their S. Sorry, let me do this in the same color I did before. No, it doesn't matter. What it, we're going to do is we're going to lose the S's first. So now this is just 4D10, right? And I only took away one electron. This is just the one S electron because this is just a plus one charge. And that should get me to 46. And I can double check myself by doing this math, right? Remember, Krypton was worth 36 electrons and then plus 10, so 46. So I have 46 electrons drawn here. 36 from Krypton, 10 from the D10. So this in blue here would be the electron configuration for silver one. So I had to kind of do two things, right? I had to first notice that this was D9, promote an electron to make it D10. And then I had to take away however many S electrons I needed to to get the right charge. In this case, it was just one because it's silver one. Now I can look at vanadium, do a similar exercise. <clears throat> vanadium is right here. Vanadium's atomic number is 23 which means it has 23 protons. And now this V, right, that's plus five. So this vanadium with the Roman numeral, that's, it looks like a big V, that's five. So that means that vanadium lost five electrons here, right? So that means that we're talking about 17, is that right? Wait, did I do this right? 17 is number 23. Yep. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, that's because I can't count. <laughs> I'm like 17, that doesn't seem right. Um, that's because uh, if you take away five from 20. So let's take a look at vanadium. Um, what we're gonna do here, right, I'm gonna draw the original one also just so we can kind of see it, right? So we're gonna start from argon. So this is this is straight up just normal vanadium. We would have said Argon, and then we would have said 4s2, um, 3d3. Now notice that this is not a d4 or a d9, so I don't have to worry about promoting any electrons into the d, right? So this is the electron configuration for vanadium. And then if I'm talking about vanadium 5 plus, that means I need to lose five electrons. Well, that's all I've got. I've got two plus three. That's all of them. So that means it's just going to be isoelectronic with argon. Or you could have written out the whole um, electron configuration for argon, right? You could have said uh, 1s2, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. And in theory, that shot out up to 18, right? 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 6 is 10, plus 2 is 12, plus 6 is 18, right? So here's your electron configuration for vanadium plus 5 ion. Now, if I do that same exercise with vanadium plus three, I'll do this in purple, but it's the same idea, right? It's 
got 23 electrons, 23 protons, but now this is vanadium plus three, so that means now that it has 20 electrons, do math this time. And um, what we're gonna do with the vanadium, and I'm gonna draw this out again just so I can cross some stuff off, right? We said that vanadium, straight up normal vanadium, not the ion, is 4s23d3. And now what I need to do is I need to lose, I need to lose three electrons total. First, I'm gonna lose two S electrons. So now I'm at um, argon with just the three D threes, and then, but the two is not enough, I need to lose three. So then I'm gonna lose one D electron. Then I'm going to lose one d electron to become AR a three d two, right? And that would be my electron configuration for vanadium two plus. So again, first you lose the s's, then you'll lose d's as you need to. Um, oh, did I say this is plus two? Okay, well I don't want to redo all of this. Sorry, I don't know why I thought this was three. Let's say this is vanadium three. If it was vanadium two, let me just cross that out. If it was vanadium two, we would have just stopped here. We would have said 3D3 and we would have just left it. But if this was vanadium three, then I would lose that extra electron and you get 3D2. So here's how you would go about these, right? If you have a D4 or a D9, promote that S electron first to fill or half fill a shell, then start taking away S's and then start taking away D's. So here's another qu type of question you can see, which is, you know, what's 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 the least likely charge on titanium. And I want you to briefly explain your answer, right? I've got titanium 2, titanium 1, titanium 4. And the key to this type of question is remembering that um, full shells tend to be more stable. So probably with a question like this, one of these is not going to have a full shell somewhere somehow. So if I look at titanium, it's right here on the periodic table. It's a transition metal. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and draw out straight up titanium first. All right, so I've got um, Ti. Well, I'll do it down here. Straight up titanium would look like argon plus a 4s2, 3d2, right? That'd be regular titanium. So now if I drew an energy diagram, right, an atomic orbital diagram for this, we'd have all the electrons for argon, all those inner core electrons, and then it's only valence electrons would be in the 4s and the 3d. Right, we'd have these electrons going on. One, two here, and then one, two here. Right, that'd be straight up titanium. Now if I go up here to titanium 2 plus, right, we're going to lose two electrons. And so I need to take this and I need to lose two, two electrons. If I'm going to lose two electrons from this, remember that we're always going to lose this, the S's first and then the D's. So what's going to happen is I'm going to go from uh, the one below. Now my titanium 2 plus is going to equal argon and 3D2. So as far as the differences go between these, I had a full uh, 4S and then add a partially full 3D. Here I just, I now I have a completely empty 4S, which is fine. Um, and then I still have a partially full D. So I had a partially full D and I had a partially full D. Those are kind of equivalent in terms of like, are you able to get complete subshells? An empty subshell is as good as having a complete full subshell. If I go to titanium one, so I go to titanium one, this means we're just gonna lose one electron. So titanium plus one means I'm going to have argon. And now I'm just going to take one of the S's and I still have the two D's. So now I kind of, that doesn't look great, right? But I had, right, I had a full 4S and now I've screwed it up to have a half full S. And that's not, that's not going to be as energetically favorable, right? Because I've got a, I've got a half full shell. What we want full or empty shells. Here at least I emptied that 4S. 
But here I have just one electron in this 1s. That's not a great sign. So I'm thinking already that this might be the cruddy one. But let me take a look, take a look at the titanium-4. If I look at titanium-4, we're going to lose four electrons. That means we're going to lose, well, all of them. Right, we're just going to go straight back down to whatever argon was, right? The, um, the uh, electron configuration for argon. So that's, all, that's actually probably the best one, right? Probably a titanium-4 is the most stable. Right, this would be the most stable uh, because it only has full shells, full subshells. I should put subshells. It only has full subshells, right? It's isoelectronic with argon. It only has full, four subshells. Losing four electrons would be a good situation for titanium. That's going to make it relatively stable. And then I would say that this one is going to be the least stable uh, because it has two partially full subshells. Right? It has a partially full S and a partially full D. That's annoying. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking to have completely full or completely empty. And then this titanium-2 is probably in the middle. If I had to rationalize this, probably in the middle somewhere. Right, And that's just because it only has one partially full shell. Right, So just in terms of how full are the shells, Probably titanium-4 is the most stable, titanium-2 is the next most stable, titanium-1 looks terrible. And in fact, in reality, you don't see a lot of titanium-1 species. You don't see like TiCl, right? It's usually TiCl-4, like you have four chlorides with your titanium-4+. plus. You don't really see titanium-1 ions that much, and this is why. It's not energetically favorable. And I just realized I need to put partially full. So anyways, that's how you deal with ions. Um, with uh, the representative elements, groups one through eight, it's pretty straightforward. You're going to just gain or lose. You're going to look like the nearest noble gas. For transition metals, the big thing is to watch out for those D4s and D9s. Promote the S electron first. Then when you start losing electrons, you lose the S's before the Ds. And you may just lose one or two uh, electrons, so you might only lose S's. But if you lose more than two electrons, that means you're also losing Ds. Um, and that's how you do electron configurations for ions. So do lots of practice, study up, and good luck.